This week on Marketplace. Oh boy, came in for a $20 oil change. You're about to see a fast loop franchise pull a fast one. If you can, try and get your transmission fluid changed. Is it necessary? No, I just did a transmission service. That's what I thought. We go up on the hoist to show you what's really going down at these oil change shops. Let me tell you a little bit about fraud. Insiders share the secrets of shaking you down. I've never worked for a more shady, crooked, deceitful company. And we track down the man behind all this greasy business. Oh, it's him right by the door. Do you want to just go get him, Tom? Yeah, where, just where? go, just go. We're heading to this economy lube in Guelph, Ontario. It's part of a chain of oil change garages that promises fast and affordable service. 10 minutes, 20 bucks, and you're done, according to their ad. Catchy, but maybe not that simple. Hi there. You need an oil change? Yes, please. Who hasn't worried about turning over their car to some gearhead? and getting back a big bill and a lot of gobbledygook. Where do you guys have them for 10 bucks? Um, depending on what kind of oil you run. We've been hearing there's reason to worry at Economy Lube. That's why we're putting it to the test. That's our house brand oil. Right off the bat, they're upselling that $20 oil change. It's not bad, but depending on how much you really like your car, like I, I would only run the $29 package recommending a more expensive package than advertised. But does it get any worse than that? These guys say you can bet on it. I've never worked for a company like Gonmulu, for a, like a, a more shady, crooked, deceitful company. They're insiders, former employees of Economy Lube who still have ties to the industry and don't want to be identified. I totally rip people off, and I, I did that for a number of years for the, for the dollar. The money. Their years of ripping people off at Economy Lube ended in a bitter fight over wages. With you had issues, you went to the labor department and, and argued over money, that sort of thing. But uh, everything we were saying is 100% true. There'd be many more people besides us that would be you know, willing to say so as well. They have no axe to grind, they say, just a conscience to clear. This is our chance to right our wrongs and bring awareness to what's going on. So they're blowing the whistle on a company that they say tops you up and rips you off, all because the boss wants it that way. I couldn't remember questioning him about the practices on, as far as sales go, and his exact words were he told me to go save the whale somewhere else, and he told me it was an upsell world. But we're not just taking their word for it. We've assembled a team of testers to help us see for ourselves. All of them work for CBC. Anu, Steve, and Ryan, each driving a car with one thing in common. They all need an oil change and nothing else. They'll be heading to that same economy lube in Guelph. And what's about to happen has lessons for us all. Our home base for the day is Conestoga College. They train a lot of future mechanics here, and they've agreed to let us use their massive garage. Morning, everybody. Nice to see you. So the plan, as you know, is we're going to head down to Economy Lou, um, and you're going to just be customers. Helping us with our test is expert Mark Zach Anderson. They shouldn't be offering you any more than just the oil change you're going in for. Everything else is fine on the cars, so it should be a nice, simple, easy in, oil change, and out. Mark has been in the industry for more than 20 years. He began as an oil change technician himself, became a mechanic, and worked his way up the ranks. He now runs this garage in Toronto's West End. There are a lot of good oil change facilities. Unfortunately, there's a few bad ones, and it spoils it for everybody. The oil change industry knows it has a bad reputation. It seems like mechanics are always out to get you. Jiffy Lube, for instance, plays off customer worries in this ad. But at Jiffy Lube, we don't fix vehicles. We help keep them running right to help you leave repair shop worries behind. So if the industry knows we're suspicious, can we really finally leave worries behind? If only. One, two, three, to do 
our test properly, it's important to establish a baseline. So Mark spends days going over our test vehicles. He knows the kind of additional services routinely offered by places like Economy Lube, such as fluid and filter changes, and he wants to beat them to the punch. He makes sure none of our cars need anything more than an oil change. Our hidden camera specialist Rob is hard at work, making sure we've got all the angles covered when it comes to capturing our test. Oh, cool. And where's that going to go? Under the hood of the Uplander. So the guy working under the hood will be able to see his hands working. His hands. Right. He'll be able to see him reaching to all the different okay. dipstick Great. and engine coolant. So, wondering what to expect? Back at Conestoga College, our first tester, Anu, is wired up and ready to go to see if what we're hearing about Economy Lube holds true. I'll open the door for you. Okay, thank you. All right, good luck. Thanks, Tom. The Economy Lube shop is less than five minutes down the road from our home base. As Anu approaches, our surveillance camera across the street picks her up and follows her in. Our insiders say at Economy Lube, the technicians count on your ignorance, even though they might not know much more about your car than you do. When I started, I'd never worked on vehicles, never popped a drain plug, never did an oil change. No experience. How about you? I had experience from previous oil change places, but I worked with people who didn't even know anything about cars at all. They soon learn the way things work at Economy Lube. And who trained you? Uh, actually, the owner of the company, Steve Moxie. And what did he teach you? How to sell all the different services, upselling. What did that mean at Economy Loop? To sell as many services and get as big of a bill as you possibly could on every single vehicle. Because he didn't care if you did the work, he cared if you got the money. And are these services that were needed? Uh, majority of the time, no. You can find a photo of owner Steve Moxie right on the door as you enter Economy Lube. Moxie has built a chain of 12 shops throughout southwestern Ontario. And according to our insiders, he's done it through dishonesty. You just need an oil change? Yes. Inside the shop, our first tester is hearing she needs a lot more than a simple oil change. Our steering push the right pink. Mm -hmm. It's actually gone brown. Okay. So I didn't smell like it's burning. Couldn't have smelled burnt, and it certainly wasn't brown, because I just changed it. And later, a former fraud cop weighs in on our findings. I have told people all my life that fraud is theft with a smile. We're inside a quick oil change shop called Economy Lube. Like all these types of shops, they say they specialize in fast work at affordable prices. Insiders tell us they do a lot more than that. Like sell you services you don't need. Engine flush. Charge whatever they can get, and then often not even do the work. Give me some examples of where you might do something that wasn't really the, the real thing. One of the easiest things to sell is power steering fluid. Just take a sample and you can tell a person that it should be clear. You could tell a person that it should be red. Or you could just go by the smell of the fluid. Smell this, the fluid's very burnt. It was a very easy sale. With each lie they tell, the technicians earn money. They were on a, a commission system as far as what you sold. So if I sold, say, a, a coolant flush for $59, I would get $2. If I sold it for $69, bucks, i get 3 bucks. The bigger the lie, the more money. That's why they do so much lying. How often would these things happen where you do a trick like that? Every day? Multiple times a day. So, will it happen to our first tester? A news car has been up on the hoist for just a few short minutes when she gets the prognosis. Um, most of your stuff is in good shape. Okay. But the car needs more than an oil change, he says. It also needs a brake flush and a power steering flush. Two procedures that involve time and the complete replacement of fluids. But why? Power steering flush is the bright pink. Mm -hmm. It's actually gone brown. Okay. So I didn't smell like it's burning. Burning fluid, just like our insiders talked about. Brake fluid's black and it should be clear like water. Remember, our expert mechanic has checked out this car and assures us it needs no such work. But in keeping with our test, we give the go-ahead. So power steering fluid and brake fluid. And then the oil change. And then the oil change. Okay. 
you want to get it done for you? Yeah, sure, if I need it. Perfect. So just give us about another 15 minutes or so, okay? 15, okay. In reality, it takes them half that time. In less than eight minutes, we get the bill. So what's my total? Um, so it's 20 after the oil change, 69 for the power steering, and 89 for the brake flush. Both would be good for two years, 48,000. Okay. With normal wear and tear, right? Uh, so it's 218.04. Oh, wow. More than 200 bucks? How'd that happen? Oh boy, came in for a $20 oil change. I know. What did I get done exactly? Uh, the power steering fluid, the whole fluid was exchanged, and the brake fluid. Power steering fluid? Yes. Okay, and why the power steering fluid? It just we push down. for a better explanation and get a better deal in the process. All right. I'll give you your oil change for free. It should be 184. 184. Our tester pays up and heads back to home base. So, how did it go? You know what? They were really nice. Hmm. Can we see the bill? Yeah, sure. Nice is nice, but our expert mechanic Mark Sack Anderson says there's nothing nice about that final bill. In your view, the power steering flush and the brake fluid flush were not needed? No. The fluids were up. All of this was checked when I had it at my shop, not three days ago. Not only was the work not needed, Mark suspects it wasn't done, given how little time it took. Mark shows us the four points behind the wheels where it would be clear if a brake flush had been carried out. There's so much rust on the back of this bleeder, or on the bleeder here, and around the seal, it hasn't been opened. That tells me that the system's not flushed. All right, Mark, let's, uh, let's go to the videotape, shall we, and see what okay. they did. Our videotape confirms Mark's suspicions. It's tightening the filter, wiping off any oil. That $90 brake flush never happened. Still nothing on the brakes, right? Nothing on the brakes. Same goes for the power steering flush. Our hidden hood cam shows no evidence it was performed. But the reality is you were charged for it, and it wasn't done. Time for test number two. Our man Ryan is pulling up for his oil change, and who knows what else. I'm here to the, for the, the engine oil change. Yep, yeah, no problem. Just like last time, that $20 oil change they advertise becomes $29. The higher you go on oil prices, the better it will be for your vehicle. And just like last time, it doesn't end there. After a quick inspection, they tell Ryan he needs more than his oil change. If you can, try and get your transmission and your mm. brake fluid changed. The brakes again and the transmission? Our expert Mark just did that a few days ago, a messy and lengthy procedure we captured on camera. Our insiders tell us this kind of deception can really add up. As much as you didn't want to do it, but at the end of the week, when you get $1,000 paychecks, take home. The money was just too good. Um, you know, with a high school education, where are you going to make between sixty-five and hundred thousand dollars a year? Uh, can I ask uh, my debit? Absolutely. Now Ryan is handing over his money at Economy Lube after just ten minutes of work on his car. A couple free air fresheners for you. Okay, that's cool. On his way with some air fresheners and a bill that stinks. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Back at home base, we have a look. How was it? It was, uh, yeah, pricey. <laughs> Let's see what you came up with. Oh, 218. Yeah. You asked for a $20 oil change? Right, yeah, I did. $218. Ryan's bill is 10 times what he went in for, including 80 bucks for the transmission. Was that needed? No, I just, just did a transmission service That's on That's what this. I thought. We check our hidden camera tape to see how they sell that one. Your transmission fluid's gone brown. Uh -huh. It should be bright pink. And it's starting okay. to smell like it's burning. There's that burning fluid line again. Our expert is appalled. It did not smell burnt because it was all fresh fluid. Mm -hmm. But I mean, there's absolutely no way that this services was needed. They're Good sales up. pitch, They're but it's it up, completely though. false. It's almost like it's script. It's almost identical to the service that we had on car number one. Mm -hmm. The same, it's dirty, it smells. Yeah. So how about that expensive brake flush? They didn't actually do it the first time they charged for it. How about this time? Mark checks and says no. They, they couldn't do a flush. have done a flush. So two for two, two flushes paid for, that didn't happen. Our third and final tester, Steve, pulls in towards the end of the day to get his oil changed. But will the upsell happen again? The answer comes 
minutes later. If you can try and get your coolant and your brake fluid changed soon. Like, is that an urgent thing? Uh, honestly, it's up to you. I mean, cool. it's more important. The technician promises to flush out the entire engine block and the radiator, and of course, the braking system. Back at home base. How was it? It was the most expensive 1999 I ever spent. Really? Oh yeah. Let's see. 251 bucks? Good lord, that's the highest of the day. What was the sales pressure like on you? They, they start off sounding like, you can choose, but they sort of, they just gradually move it into, you really should get it, we can do it for you right now. But did they do it? Mark is interested in that full system coolant flush they charged for. He says this car uses a special coolant called Dexcool, which is orange. He shows us what's in that reservoir. Oh, look at that. Bright green. Bright green. So that's not the proper coolant. That's for not this the vehicle. proper coolant for this vehicle. So is, is what's in there in here? We don't know that. Mark wants to take a sample from the radiator. He says if an actual flush was done, the fluid coming out will also be green. That looks orange to me. Oh, yeah. Look at that. OK, so uh, that's coming out of the radiator. Right. That is what is throughout the system. What we've seen changed here is the stuff in the reservoir. Mm -hmm. And it's been changed with the wrong stuff. And what does that mean for the vehicle? It can cause damage to the sensors. It can cause damage and premature wear inside the engine. Um, we should really be pulling that stuff out of the reservoir uh, before it causes problems. So, not only was a coolant flush not needed, it was not done right, causing cross-contamination, which means we have to fix it. And yet we paid $250. What do you think of what they've done? Certainly not right. Certainly gives us in the industry a bad name. And it's certainly time to get some answers. Oh, what? It's coming. So, after the break, we show up at Economy Lube's warehouse uninvited. Mr. Boxy, it's Tom Harrington from Marketplace. I've never worked for a more shady, crooked, deceitful company. Our investigation into oil chain shops run by Economy Lube takes us to a former investigator himself. Let me tell you a little bit about fraud. Mark Simpson used to lead the major fraud division of the Hamilton Police. We show him what we were sold at Economy Lube. The brake fluid's black and it should be clear like water. And what our expert mechanic discovered. It hasn't been opened. That tells me that the system's not flushed. So what's his verdict? I have told people all my life that fraud is theft with a smile. Putting it right out there, you're saying what they're doing is fraud? If they are charging for and accepting money for and receiving money for services that they did not perform, that you paid for, in all honesty, that's fraud. And that's exactly what we found. Time to take our evidence to the top. We're as close to the lot as we can possibly be, so we can see the door. We're outside Economy Lube's warehouse in Cambridge, Ontario. He's in the car sitting. Is he really? Yeah. Looking for some answers. OK, he's gone in. We've already made repeated requests for an on-camera interview with President and Founder Steve Moxie. He's now inside. He backed in with his Range Rover inside and closed that garage door. Giving him weeks to think about it. So if he's seen the cameras, I don't think he'll come to the door. Right. More details when requested. I don't know exactly how we should proceed because we're across the parking lot right now. But Moxie still won't come on camera. Oh, what? It's coming. Do you want to just go get him, Tom? Yeah, what do we try now? So when we spot the man who greases the wheels at Economy Lube... OK, here he comes. He's out. So just just go, just go. We decide to roll. Mr. Moxie. But Steve Moxie... It's Tom Harrington from Marketplace doesn't want to talk about why his company is ripping people off. A few days later, we reach Moxie by phone, and he denies any wrongdoing. I have a real hard time believing that you took three cars in and not one of those cars actually had the service done. Because I'm in stores every day. I, I, you know, I could be wrong. You know, we have 100 employees. Anything's possible. If it's in fact the case, I agree with anybody that that is fraudulent. 
We contact those Economy Lube employees caught by our hidden cameras. This one denies working on any of our test cars. There you go, sir. But the other fesses up. I'm not proud of it, but that's how we were taught to do stuff. In that company, you were forced to rip people off, basically, because all the owner's looking for is money. And if he's not making money, then you're no use to him. As for lessons learned in all this, here's a few tips from our Marketplace Survival Guide the next time you need an oil change. Familiarize yourself with the service schedule recommended by your car's manufacturer. They built your car and probably know best when it needs maintenance. Quick oil change shops are fine for a quick oil change. For anything bigger or unexpected, stick with a mechanic you know you can trust. And finally, be on your toes and know an upsell is coming. That way, you won't be caught off guard by any greasy business.